Hi, my name is Keith and today I'm going to be reviewing the new TAP from T-Mobile, the new 3G phone that came out at the start of November. This is my first time reviewing a phone, indeed it's my first time reviewing anything, so please be gentle with me as I will try and take you on a, a tour of the features of this new phone. So here's what the phone looks like. It's quite thin, it fits very comfortably in the hand. The back is a plastic material and the side and all the way around the frame is this metal strip which gives a quite attractive finish. On the long side of the phone there are metal buttons for a volume rocker, a lock button and a camera button. These two are a little too close together for my liking. On the top of the phone we have a micro USB charging sinking port and a very tiny power button, not that easy to press if your fingers are a little on the large side. There's a hole for a lanyard, and that's really, the only other buttons are on the front of the phone. Uh, send an end key and a directional D-pad with centre button. On the back of the phone, we have a 2 megapixel camera and a speaker for the speaker phone. You don't actually see any manufacturer name on the phone, but it's manufactured by a Chinese company called Huawei. Uh, this phone accepts an SD card, a micro SD card, which doesn't come with the phone. And so there's a SIM and the SD card pops in the side. I've added a card to this phone, but it doesn't come with them. If I try and press this tiny button to turn on the phone, it is pretty tricky. I guess if you have nails, it would help. Here we go. The screen on this phone is 2.8 inches and it's 240 by 320 pixels. It's a touch screen but it's resistive touch not capacitive and the phone is still booting up. It's very light in the hand this phone, uh, I quite like that. Okay, so there's the main screen and here we see it's just going to finish loading. Okay. The main screen, this is the default wallpaper, this is pretty much what you see on a brand new phone except at the very top of the screen, that icon is because I've added a micro SD card which you don't get with the phone by default. So first things first, it is touch screen and I can press any of these four main launcher applications. We have a standard phone dialer, the actual buttons are a little on the small side. Now. I could also, rather than press these, I could use this D-pad to navigate and then press the center button. That's often a lot easier for many applications. It's easier using the D-pad than the touch screen. Let's bring up the contacts. Uh, it's a fairly standard way of navigating contacts. One limitation is that when you want to search contacts, you don't get a QWERTY keyboard, you get an A to Z keyboard, and those buttons are a little on the small side. The other limitation of this phone is that the contacts can only store three phone numbers and one email address. I think that may be limiting for some people who use the phone to do a lot of business work and where you want to have more details. Before I go into the web browser, I just want to note that when you lock the phone, you press the key to unlock and it says press and hold the padlock to unlock. And you get this little ripple effect and it just seems to take like a second to unlock. It always feels a little too slow, whereas if you just click unlock, it unlocks instantly. Okay, so let's go into the web browser. The web browser supports portrait mode and a landscape mode. Uh, I've changed the home page to be Google, and that switches fairly quickly. Uh, when you're in the web browser, you can use the volume buttons to zoom. It seems to go in a little excessive when you zoom in on the big scale and if I zoom out I will show you, you can just it's not very smooth but you can scroll by using the touch screen one of the little annoyances is that T-Mobile put a bunch of default bookmarks on the phone and you can't do anything with those they're always there in the web browser you can bring up a yeah, access all the menus and settings that icon. Yeah, when you have the toolbars up, 
you lose a lot of real estate on the screen. I'd say the browser is usable but not fantastic. The last of the four main launcher icons on the main screen is called Menu. And this moves into the other main mode of the phone where you have this grid of 12 icons, most of which represent single applications that you can launch. You can't customise or change any of these icons or shortcuts however. You have access to contacts, which is exactly what you can get by pressing the contacts on the main screen. And you have an email application, which is, it supports multiple email accounts. In most cases, they're relatively easy to set up. I had no problems with setting up Gmail. I had a few more issues setting up Mobile Me. The big limitation is that you can only store 100 emails on this phone, which doesn't make it very usable if you want to use this phone to do a lot of emailing. The other problem is that although it supports POP and IMAP, it doesn't seem to really bring over all of your folders that you may have set up on another computer for your IMAP mail. So it's okay to send and you can attach, but it's not a great email client. Okay, you have the web browser, which we've already seen. A fairly sort of as you'd expect music player. Um, I think there's some default music on the phone. Or maybe these are ringtones. You get an EQ and you can uh, play that in the background if you want to do other things. So, no, it's not that. Okay, so pretty basic music player. Okay, messaging. The thing I don't like about this phone is that when you try texting, by default you get a T9 keyboard, which is okay, the buttons are quite large and you know it will give you some spelling suggestions. Oops. But the other thing you can do is come on. The other thing you're meant to be able to do, yeah, is get a query keyboard up. When you're in the query keyboard though, oops, come back again. What do I press? Yeah, the, the screen is a little small, and you, if you use your thumbs, I do find myself pressing the wrong button quite a bit. The fastest I can do anything is using the T9 with a sort of single finger. If I go back to the landscape, you notice there's no spelling suggestions come up. If you make a typo, it is not an Android phone. You're not going to have some pop-up window showing you what the word should be. And these buttons are a little on the small side. See, I, I made a typo there and it didn't correct. So it's not, you have to be careful and deliberate, and if you type too quickly, it gets a little overwhelmed. Next up, there's an application called Telenav. This is a GPS turn by turn navigation application, but it's a paid app. You get it for free for, to, for demo purposes, but after a week, that's it, I think. Otherwise, it's $10 a month if you want to carry on using that. The cool log icon is just exactly as the same as what happens when you, as when you press the send key. Entertainment is actually a collection of smaller little applications. You do get an FM radio for the phone. I should say that you know there isn't a 3.5mm headphone jack. It uses a proprietary USB connector on the headphones. The camera is you know, pretty much exactly what you expect from a cell phone camera. Two megapixels, and it does seem to offer some controls above the most basic. You can also take video, and it's meant to support this interface where if you stroke the screen, it changes the brightness settings, but it's, it's quite clunky. Yeah, so I've increased the brightness settings there. You also have a voice recorder on the phone. It supports Java, like many phones. That does mean you can install some other Java applications, and I'll come back to 